In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into the topspin swinging volley. At higher levels, if you don't know how to attack from below the net, you won't be able to put enough pressure on your opponents. So now let's jump right in. All right, topspin swinging volley. When do we use this shot? We use this shot anytime we are trying to attack from below the net. When we have balls that we are striking below the net and we wanna put some pace, we wanna put some spin, we have to utilize topspin to get that ball up and over the net and down at our opponent's feet. To start off, I wanna talk about the grip, which is the most important part. Now, you can hit this in a continental grip. Some players do it, but most players, even the pros, they use an Eastern grip. Why is this? I'm gonna explain this now. Um, this is the Topspin Pro, link in the description. We can put it down there, but this is a good tool to actually practice your topspin. But when we talk about grips, the continental grip is a good grip for most volleys and things like that. But when it comes to topspin, this is what it's going to look like when I actually contact the ball um, with a continental grip. If I have an eastern grip, I just want to show you my eastern grip is going to be like that. Now that little change there, okay, so from continental to eastern, what does that do? Hopefully you can see it in this camera. It closes that paddle face a little bit more so that when we get under the ball and when we apply topspin, it's much easier. So I would recommend an Eastern grip. Again, your continental is gonna be that hammer grip here, just like this. And then that Eastern, what you can do, it's fairly simple. I can actually grab this um, edge of the paddle and I'm gonna rotate it to my left a little bit. And that's a, kind of the easy way how to get in that slightly Eastern grip, okay? Next, I'm gonna talk about the stance. Now, the stance is really important when we talk about hitting this topspin swinging volley because these balls are coming low. Remember, we're attacking from below the net and we're trying to brush up on the ball. So, if we are in a very narrow stance, you can see in this camera here, if I were to get low to get underneath this ball, I'm gonna to have to bend at my waist right, like this. If I'm in a really good position, and I want you to imagine when your opponents are hitting their third shot drop or they're hitting a fifth shot reset, when we're trying to keep them back, I'm in a good low position so that when I drop my paddle down here, I can actually bend with my legs and then I can actually follow through up and use that top spin that I need. Okay, so Jordan talked about a nice wide stance. Now when I'm setting up for this roll shot, typically our contact point is in the center of our body. When we hit this shot, believe it or not, we want our contact point to be in front of our body, but actually with our dominant leg. And I like to say typically right in front of our dominant knee. So in this case, I'm right-handed, I swing with the ball at my right leg. If you're left-handed, you swing with the ball at your left leg. Now from here, when I drop my paddle, notice I drop my paddle and my wrist is very relaxed and loose. What does that allow me to do? It really lets me drop my paddle head low and get my paddle underneath this ball so I can now brush up. Now, if this ball is the top or the tape of the net in this case, I need to make sure that from my setup point to my right leg, I'm dropping my paddle head and my paddle below this net so I can now brush up on this ball. All right, let me show you a couple quick examples. All right, so Kaden just did a good job explaining that contact point. Um, just to reiterate, you have this angle here. We are hitting it out in front. And just like Kaden said, we want to get that contact point a little bit towards our right, kind of in front of our right knee and contacting it here. I just want to show you what it would look like if we are trying to hit this ball and it's coming straight towards us. 
and it's right in front of us, right? It's very, very difficult to actually get that brushing motion, which I'm gonna show you in a sec. So as that ball's coming over, we're gonna show you a couple of clips here. You might at times have to move and slide over to get that contact closest to your right. Or um, let's say the ball is way over here, right? And we might have to shuffle over here. So whatever you need to do to move your feet and prepare for the ball as it's coming over, we wanna make sure we get that contact in the right position. Now we're gonna talk about the actual technique. Kaden talked about how we have to drop this paddle head down. So you can see in this camera here, um, we're dropping it down, that paddle tip, and why this is really important to get that brushing motion up, we have to start low. We're gonna get topspin by swinging low to high. And now we're gonna talk about the swing path. One of the things that is super crucial when we talk about topspin is pronation. A very simple way to explain pronating, I know it's a, a weird word, but our forearm is right here and when I pronate my forearm, I'm basically turning my forearm, forearm over. So this is what you're gonna see. So you can actually do this really easily um, here at home. You can have your four fingers down just like this, relax, and then you can just come up here to your left shoulder, so like this. This motion is so key when we're talking about um, a lot of different topspin shots. So when I'm here, now with the paddle here, okay, and then I'm rolling it over like this. So my forearm is up right now, and then af after I swing, it faces down. So what you will see a natural swing path for most players, they're here, and then as they swing through, they're gonna come up somewhere over here. Now to create topspin, we have to have this upward swing path. So you can see in this camera here, when I drop my paddle down, it has to be brushing up on the ball like this. This is the only way we're going to create topspin and dip that ball down. If you're doing this at home or you're practicing the shot and your swing path is really linear or forward like this, right? We're not gonna actually get the topspin we need. We have to be swinging up. So you will see certain players, right? Another kind of option on hitting topspin is just going straight up like this. And you can see in this camera here, right? This is an option for, um, hitting topspin and creating it. Whatever we need to do to get our swing path going up, but again, for both ways, whether you kind of do this or you come across more like this, two things are consistent, and that is number one, we're dropping that paddle head down and we have to drop it lower than the contact point. Number two is that we are brushing up here. And the one that I do, the one that I use all the time, and Kaden as well, as we drop it here, we are making sure that we're pronating with that forearm. So utilizing something like this, you can easily try to practice that, but you don't even need something like this. You can just do some shadow swings from the non-volley zone line here in that ready position, wide stance, drop that paddle head down, and then from here I brush up. So that's gonna be really important. Last thing I wanna talk about is that swing speed. Okay, depending on the height of the ball, I'm gonna to bring this Topspin Pro back in. Depending on the height of the ball, we need to adjust our swing speed. Why is that really important? Well, if you have a ball that is very, very low, now this doesn't go lower than this, but if I'm contacting the ball from down here, let's just say, let's just say it's down here, it's really low. If I swing way too fast, it's gonna be really difficult for me to get that ball up and over the net. I know it's a little counterintuitive, but the higher the contact point, right? If it's some, somewhere this high, I, could, I might be able to swing a little bit harder because I don't need to get as much top spin. I don't need to get as much clearance over the net because this ball's a little bit higher, okay? So if you have lower balls, if you have balls that are around your knee level, and you wanna hit this topspin ball, make sure that you drop your paddle down low, below that contact, and that you get that low to high motion, and our swing speed is going to be fairly slow to medium pace, okay? Just for extreme example, when we get balls that are kinda of at net level or above net level, we can actually swing, uh, use a swing path that's more linear here, and we could swing a lot faster, right? 
when the ball's really low, we have to drop our paddle head down more and our swing speed has to be much slower than if the ball were higher. All right, if you're working on your topspin forehand swinging volley, this is an easy way that you can kind of work on it in a controlled environment. It's very hard at times to work on this shot when things are moving really fast. So we're isolating it here for Caden. Um, so Caden, we're doing all the same things that we just talked about. And the swing speed is the last thing we just talked about. And I'm gonna actually toss some fairly low balls to Caden and we're gonna see how he adjusts, okay? When it, the ball's higher, he can take a faster swing speed and you will see his swing path more linear. And then when the ball's lower, he's going to have to take a more aggressive upward motion. So we're gonna see him adjust on the fly here. So on higher balls like that, right? Caden could swing more out like that. When it's lower, see what he does. Let's do a couple more here. Good. Nice. Good. Ooh. But see, even that one, you can see how, how much slower he had to swing there. He had to adjust it. Again, let's try a really low one, Caden, and have you swinging really fast. Yep. And see if you can get that in. Barely. Yep. Okay. Ugh. Good. Ugh, definitely good. a little bit harder. Yeah. So again, with uh, Caden's good technique, he's actually, actually, it's really impressive. <laughs> he's actually, um, can actually control that. But again, if you're reaching in here, it's we'll a, try. It's a much try harder a little, ball. Try to a little control, bit lower there. Sure. <laughs> oh yeah. Ugh. Good. Right. Okay, and again, the faster you swing too from a low position, those, those last ones were out, it's, it's a lot easier to actually hit the ball out. Yeah. So controlling your swing speed is really important. Well, and for the most part, these balls are gonna be popped up if you don't hit them well. So, <laughs> you know, you're either gonna be forcing a ball out or you're gonna be popping a ball up to a crashing person coming to the kitchen line. So maybe not the ball you wanna be swinging fast on. But. Yeah. All right, Cadence, you see a couple more? Nice. Gotta be good. smart there. Oh. Nice, good. Good. Oh. <laughs> Tricked them. Oh. Good, okay. So like that one, I would say it's probably the fastest you can probably swing yeah. to hit a quality ball. Remember, yeah. these are balls that are hit from a third shot drop that we're talking about or somewhere, or they're coming up through transition and you're trying to keep them back. Now we're gonna do a quick drill to put it all together I'm gonna start the baseline, I'm gonna feed, and he's going to try to attack me with swinging volleys. Okay, one thing that we didn't mention um, that's really important, if Caden cannot take it out of the air as a swinging volley, you're gonna automatically see him step back and create space, but when he is, when he can take that ball out of the air, he's in that nice low stance, what we just talked about, okay? So, Caden, I'm gonna feed the ball here, and then we're gonna play it out. Oh. Oh. oh, so on that one, Caden, what do you, or what would you say? Like, I uh, definitely just have to be a little bit more upward on the swing. That one, I, I tried to be a little bit more linear and keep it a little bit lower since I knew he was a little bit closer to the kitchen line. But in that case, slow the swing down, a little bit more lift on my yeah. shot. Good ball. Okay. All right. So obviously I'm feeding that first ball a little bit high so we can roll it. But this is a good real life scenario drill that you can do with a partner. Feed them a ball, try to work your way through tran transition. And then as I'm coming up through transition, his target is at my feet, right? So if I'm here, right, his target's right here. If I'm a little bit closer here, then he's gonna have to slow his swing speed down, right? That's why it's really important and catch me here because if he hits that same ball hard when I'm halfway up, then I could be countering up here um, and really putting the pressure back on him. But again, if you're struggling with your topspin volleys, 
Go out there and practice these things and we'll see you in the next video.